Hi, I'm Tyler. I'm Lisa. And I'm Emily. And we're going to be doing some problems related to cost curves. And uh, keep in mind that our notation might be different than your professor's, so keep that in mind while you're doing your homework. Alright, so I'm going to show you how to graph total cost, total fixed cost, and total variable cost. So, we're just going to use the number from before for uh, total fixed cost, which was 100. That one's the easiest to draw, so we're going to do that one first. So, we're just going to say that, that right there is 100. And it's just a straight line at 100 for all levels of output, because it's fixed. And it's as simple as that, really. That's your total fixed cost. So, total cost starts at, at 0. It starts at total fixed cost, because with no variable cost, which we don't have any at zero, the total cost is just the total fixed cost. And then, it goes up from there. And it usually looks something like this. So we'll just say this is our total cost. And total variable cost, all it is, is it, it's parallel to the total cost curve, just shifted down by the total fixed cost, which in this case is 100. And it just starts at 1, because there's no total variable cost at any quantity before one. So we're just going to start right here, and then it just follows the total f cost curve parallel, just this distance right here is equal to total fixed cost. Just something to kind of remember. And that's total cost, total variable cost, and total fixed cost. And that's what they look like. We, we don't really use these quite as much as the average and marginal curves in economics because you can really tell more from the average and marginal curves. But if you don't have the, if you see a graph like this and they're not labeled, one way to know that this is that these are total curves is that they're always increasing or constant in the uh, case of total fixed cost. But they're always increasing because when you add output, you add cost. While average curves and marginal curves, they go down and up and they're a little bit more variable, but one easy way to tell that curves are total is that they are always increasing and they will look like this. So next we're going to do some marginal and average curves. So now we're going to graph the marginal cost, the average variable cost, and the average total cost curves. And these are the ones that you're going to see a lot more often. These are used uh, pretty widely in microeconomics. You'll see them a lot, so it's important that you understand these. So I usually start with marginal cost. And what it does is it starts, and then it goes down for a little while, and then it'll pull up. And that's really all there is to marginal cost as far as what the graph looks like. What's interesting, like the, the bigger part of this graph is where the marginal cost and how it interacts with the average variable cost and average total cost. So next we're going to do average variable cost, and it's going to start at the same place as marginal cost because at quantity 1, which this is, the the cost of adding one output is also the variable cost and so they're equal at one but marginal cost usually starts going down whereas average variable cost doesn't go down quite as much but when marginal cost is below average variable cost it pulls it down because the, the cost of adding the next unit of output is less than the average and when you add a number less than the average to the total it brings down the average so as long as the marginal cost is lower than the average variable cost, average variable cost will be decreasing. And then there's a point right here where they, they intersect. So right there at that point, average variable cost starts increasing. And I believe in the numbers before, this was at a quantity of about 5.5. And then this minimum right here at marginal cost was at 4 from the table earlier in the video. So that's average variable cost, and average total cost has a similar uh, similar interaction with the marginal cost curve as when the marginal cost is less than the average total cost, it pulls it down, and when it's greater, it pulls it up for the, for the same reasons. But the average total cost usually starts kind of high, because at a quantity of one, at low quantities, the fixed cost usually comprises a bigger part of the total cost than variable cost, so the average total cost is going to start high, and then it's going to get lower and closer to the average, to average variable cost, and then, see, at this point right here, it intersects the marginal cost curve, starts going back up, 
and in the limit, the average variable costs and average total cost curve will start to converge because the fixed costs are spread out over such a high number of output that they become smaller and smaller and smaller, so they, the average total cost and average variable cost will get closer as output goes on. And these intersect, the marginal cost curve intersects the average total cost curve at something like 8.5 in the previous uh, table. And so just to go over that, uh, the relationship between the average total cost and average variable cost, I'm going to draw this out a little bit more. So you can see at low quantities, this difference right here, which is average fixed cost, is big because it's not distributed over very many Q. So if your average or if your fixed cost is 100, like it was in the uh, previous example, this is 100 right here, whereas this is only I think it was 20. So it's such a huge number. But then as you go on and increase Q, it gets smaller and smaller. So the distance between the average total cost and average variable cost get smaller because as you increase Q, average fixed cost, well we don't have an actual curve for it. We, it's usually not represented, but if we did, it would look something like, uh, let's see, this is 20, this is about 120, so it would start something like here, and then just go down, and then 10 to 0 in the limit, but that's not important, just, it always goes down, and so, what the average total cost essentially is, is average variable cost plus this average fixed cost. And so as average fixed cost gets smaller and smaller, the average variable cost gets way closer to the average total cost as quantity increases. So that's really it for our cost curves. Just the uh, important points to remember are the intersections, basically. So where marginal cost equals average variable cost. Marginal cost will always intersect the average variable cost and average total cost curves at their minimum. That's, uh, you're probably going to have to know that for a lot of questions. And just know that when marginal cost intersects and goes from below to above uh, average curve, either average variable cost or average total cost, it's where it starts to go from pulling it down to pulling it up. And that's really the important takeaway from these graphs. And so hopefully you understand these a little bit better. Well, hopefully you have a better understanding of cost curves now. Uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to come to the Econ Tutoring Center or leave a comment on the video. We'll try to respond to it.